hi guys and welcome back in this video we'll be continuing where we left off and we will be looking at how to actually save our enhanced input action mappings so in the last video where we left off we had the simple character and you can go ahead and change the controls basically and now if i were to use my e key which i set over there it works but this gets reset we'll fix that and we'll look at how to save it and if you guys have any questions or suggestions make sure you guys do join my discord server and if you guys do want to support me in any way make sure you guys do donate on my patreon so in order to save we'll be using something known as a save game object so that this is what will be stored in your hard drive or your ssd so create a save game object so go to blueprints save game and we'll just call this one input mapping save game So you could name it anything. So I think I misspelled that. And inside here we'll have the mappings array. So create a new variable and call this one mappings. And just if you want any sort of reference, you could name it mappings underscore s or something to denote save, but that's fine. And if I were to search enhanced, you should find enhanced action key mappings and change that to an array. So this is all going to work. Now what I want you guys to do is create two functions or custom events rather. So create a custom event and call this one save settings. This is the custom event which we will call when we want to save the settings. The way it works is first you check if you have already saved once. So every save game object will have a slot name. So you could have this, maybe for your game settings, you could have another save game and each one will have their own slot name. Then it's going to return an object reference to that and you can cast to your corresponding save game and get the variables. That's how it's going to work. If that was a little bit confusing, you could rewind and watch it once again. So what we want to do is we want to check if the save game exists. And we'll just call this one key maps, for example, you could call it anything. And if it does exist, it means we already have it. But if it doesn't, we want to create one. So go ahead and create a save game object. Now this is going to actually create an instance of the save game object. And once you call the function save game to slot, it's going to save it to your hard drive. That's how it's going to work and make sure your slot names are the same. So key maps, key maps here as well. Our class is going to be input mapping save game. And also what we want to do is we want to set our mappings to our mapping array in the player controller. So what we'll basically do is we'll update the mapping array in our player controller, which is in this class right here. And once we update that to whatever is supposed to be there, whatever the latest version is supposed to be there and we want to save it, we are going to call this save settings function, which is going to set it in our hard drives version. That's basically how it's going to work. And let's say we do have it. We can go ahead and load the same save game object. So load save, uh, load game from slot, copy over the slot name, make sure it's exactly the same. And now we can go ahead and cast to our input mapping save game. I guess that's what we called it. And over here, we can go ahead and set mappings to our mappings array. So that part is going to remain the same. And once we're done with that, what we can do is we can go ahead and save this. So save game to slot. All right, and the slot name is going to remain the same. So once we set the array, we can go ahead and save our game. Now for our load settings, it'll remain exactly the same. So we can go ahead and duplicate it and we can type in load settings. Whoops, create a custom event and type in, oops, right click, create a custom event and call this one load settings. I mean, you could call it load key maps or whatever, but that's fine. So we are still going to check if a save game exists. And if a save game does exist, we can go ahead and load it. Otherwise we are going to create one. 
this time though we want to do the inverse operation basically we want to get the mappings array now let's say save game doesn't exist and we create a save game object by default this mappings is going to be empty not this mappings the mappings inside here inside the save game object will be empty because we haven't set anything yet so what we can do is in this case we can go ahead and get our mapping array and or rather set our mapping array to be equal to whatever our enhanced input local sub subsystem has so enhanced input local player subsystem so we'll get the other one without the reference so enhanced input local player subsystem and we are going to get all player mappable keys and we can set our mapping to this and now we what now what we want to do is basically store this back in or load it or another way you can do it is you can directly set the mapping so set mappings you can go ahead and pass this in and now what we can do is we can load it so the way we would load it is we would just grab this reference and we can go ahead and set the mapping inside our play controller to be that and we can go ahead and save game to slot once again because we haven't created an object yet so this will be the first time we'll load it so we'll just save it later on uh let's say the save game ob object already exists you don't have to save it in this case we'll just get the mappings so we have to cast to it first so we are going to copy the same cast which we used and we will require our mappings array which is inside the save game object so this will be mappings and we can go ahead and set our mappings to be equal to this so that's about it so we don't need to save or anything because we aren't actually manipulating anything so this is how we are going to do it now there's one flaw which you probably might have noticed so if you were to press play and if you were to change any option and go back it is going to work but let's say you open the menu again it's going to reset the reason is what's happening is we are again setting the mapping to what we had in our initial array which is logically wrong you could go over the logic and you'll probably figure it out in a while so what we want to do instead is once we actually add the player mapped key one more thing i would like to mention is add a small delay because for some reason it takes a little bit of a time and there is no way for us to actually check how many mappings we actually modified apart from this but even though this would return one when you change one mapping it doesn't happen instantly it takes some time so make sure you just give a small delay i'm not sure if it's a bug with the engine or whatever but a small delay works and for a logic correction we have to get the mapping in our input local subsystem so we'll get map player map all player mappable action key mappings and we'll get the one with the same display name so the way we'll do that is we'll just iterate through this so we can create a new function so we'll copy this over and we'll create a new function and we'll call this one get mapping from subsystem and we want a text input so we'll call this one mapping name or display name we are using the display name if you are using the name make sure you just use name all right now we'll just go ahead and promote this to a local variable and we'll call this one array maybe and now what we want to do is we want to iterate through this so we want to do a for each loop and we're going to break this so we'll get our player mappable options so if our display name is exactly equal to our display name which we passed in that case this is the mapping that we want and we can return it so what we can do is we can go ahead and return it so add in a return node and this is the mapping which we want to return all right 
So we'll just call this one mapping. And make this function pure. You need not, but anyways. So we can get mapping from subsystem. Get the display name from our input. And this is what we want to set this to. So now if I actually go ahead and press play, if I were to press I and I press E for example, I press I again and press I again, you see E remains over there. And it does not go like before. Now the challenge is, once we actually close and open the game, it's back to where it was. So basically once we actually update all our mappings, we need to save it basically. So the way we would do that is inside our widget because that's where we want to save it once we update all our mappings. Now this update for loop is happening for each mapping. So calling save multiple times isn't the best thing to do. What you can do is you can head into your UI and you can go to your key select list, which is the main widget which you had. And after this loop is complete, you can grab a reference to your player controller, which I'm sure we had or don't we? If we have it over here as well, it's going to be useful for us. So nope, we don't have a reference to our player controller. So we can head into a key select list. So get owning player. We can go ahead and cast to our BP player controller, whatever we have over here. And what we can do is we can go ahead and save settings. So once we actually do this, so we can go ahead and save settings. So this is going to be when we actually refresh our mappings. Or we could do it when we actually set it. Anything is fine. So we look into that. Let's see if this works. And one more thing is you will obviously have to load it in at the start because you're not actually loading it in. So instead of setting it to what's there in the enhanced input local player subsystem, you would want to load in whatever is there over here. So we want to still set our mapping, but we want to load our mapping. So rather than this, we'll call our load mappings function or rather load settings is what we called it, I believe. However, once we set this array, nothing is going to happen. The reason is we have just set the mappings array, but our enhanced uh, local input player subsystem doesn't still know that these mappings have to be updated. So what we can do is we can just iterate through this and we can just go ahead and update the mapping. So what we can do is once all of this is done, so this is the save function, I believe. So this is our load function. So once we load in the mappings, we can go ahead and iterate through this. So this is going to remain for both. And what we can do is we can go ahead and update mapping. And for the display name, we are going to click on break. So we can get our display name over here. And our new key is going to be the key which is over here. So now what should happen in theory is we should load our maps success, uh, mapping successfully. So if I were to just print out a string, we will successfully load in the maps. So as you can see, we get hello printed five times and we can also print the key name. So, so if I type in key display name, you can go ahead and print it out as well. So as you see, you get W A S T and spacebar. Now let's try the save and let's see where we can put the function. So let's say make this E and now E remains and E works. Now, if I were to go ahead and press play, as you can see, we get E over here. Now, if I press I, as you can see, we have E and it has updated in the enhanced input subsystem, whatever that thing was. So that's about it. So we have successfully saved our mappings and now we can reuse this multiple times. So now it's E. Now let's say I change jump to the W key. I don't know why you'd want to do that. So now every time I press my W key, he's going to jump. Maybe I want the space bar now. So press I space bar again. 
change this to a W key and let's say I close the game and now it's set to spacebar once again so W I go ahead and close it not sure what's up with that so it turns out first we actually clear out everything and then we actually go ahead and do it because uh, when we are actually iterating through this we already have a mapping with w as the key so that's the reason it's simply going to fail so what we can go ahead and do is we can just clear out all the mappings so the best way we can do this is before updating we can get all our mappings and get our input subsystem again and pretty sure there's a remove function so remove all player mapped keys so this is going to be before the loop and now we can go ahead and iterate through this so go ahead and try that press i and this works now if i were to go ahead and press w for this and if i were to press play and it is still k so press i w so we can fix that by adding the same delay which we added so that should be good now if i were to press w for example go ahead and press i this works now if i press escape go ahead and press play again and as you can see w has been saved so most of the problems which we face seems to be because of this delay which you need to add for some reason all these functions take a bit of time and it does stuff in the background and there's no real way of handling this other than just giving a delay so just give a small delay and it should work so that's it for this video guys thanks for watching if you guys did learn something new and yeah i'm pretty sure this is going to be useful for your games to save your input action mappings and see you guys next time goodbye